Hello and welcome to Ben Rosser's Conservatorium of Audio. I'm Ben Rosser and today we're going to be taking a look at some simple tips and tricks in Ableton Live 8. Some of these you may already know, but if not, then you may just find something handy in this tutorial that will help make your life in Ableton Live that little bit easier. So I've regularly been asked a few questions. Today we're going to look at answering some of those questions as well as showing you a few other little bits and pieces. One of the first things we're going to look at is I regularly get asked about how to solo or record arm multiple channels at once. If we go up to our options menu and go into our preferences and go into our record warp and launch settings, normally you'll find that the exclusive arm and solo buttons are turned on by default. But if you turn those off, it'll allow you to solo and record our multiple channels at once, which can be quite handy, especially when using a lot of different channels and needing to hear how two or three different channels are interacting with one another. The other thing I'd like to point out while we're in here is, by default, normally the bit depth of recordings is set at 16-bit. I'd recommend at least using 24-bit, or if you're bouncing internally in live, I'd use 32-bit as that'll retain all of the quality of the audio that you're working with. If you're recording from an audio interface, so if you're recording a guitar or something from a microphone, I'd recommend going for 24-bit as you'll find that most converters in the interfaces won't be capable of 32-bit anyway. One of the other questions I regularly get asked is how to save effects presets and racks and other different bits and pieces. So we're going to have a look at a, a few things related to that. Firstly, what we'll do is we'll just get ourselves a bit of an audio clip. And just chuck that one in there. And if we modified that clip, say if we open it up and we decided to quantize it, for example, as you can see there, and then we wanted to be able to save a copy of that quantized clip, all we have to do is grab hold of that clip and drag it back into the browser. And as you can see, Live is allowing us to save it, so we could save it like so, and just change the name so that we know that that's the quantized one, and Live will also save the warp settings with that as well, so as soon as we drag that one back in, we automatically get all of the warp settings that we saved with it, which is quite handy. When it comes to saving effects presets and instrument presets, it's also fairly easy. For example, if we had a chorus effect on our audio channel and we change that one around a little bit, it's something a bit random for the moment, and we wanted to be able to save that one as a preset, we could either drag that one straight back into our chorus effect and give it our own preset in there or you can also set up your own preset folders within the, the file browser itself so for example we could just drag that one straight into the file browser as well and give that one a name and hit enter like that and we've automatically got our own preset saved as you can see when we drag it back in all of our settings are as we had them you can also use that same technique with all of the different racks in live, the drum rack, instrument rack, the audio and MIDI effects racks. Just drag them straight into the browser as well. As we can see, we'll just chuck a couple of effects in there. And we'll just select both of those and group them. And as we can see, they get thrown straight into an audio effects rack. And just the same as we did before, we can just drag that one straight into the browser and give that one a name as you can see, which is quite handy. So Again, we'll just delete that one for the moment. Within the racks themselves, there's also a few different handy features. For example, our macro controls. So if we wanted to be able to control, say, our tuning control in our corpus effect using one of our macros, we can just right-click the tune control and go map to one of the macros and as you can see we can now control that one like so which is quite handy. We've also got various different chains available in our effects racks so say if we wanted one chain which has our chorus and our corpus effect on and we also want a clean chain so that we can blend in between 
the clean and the affected signal, we can just add a second chain in there, as we can see, the second one with no audio effects. You can create as many different chains as you want, and put as many different effects on each chain as you like. So it can be quite handy, as we can see. So we've now got one with an EQ, one with a beat repeat effect. We've got our clean chain, and we've got our first chain with our chorus and our corpus effect on it. Many different things that you can do with that. So again, we'll just delete that one for the moment. There's a few other things you can do when you're dealing with the instrument rack, for example. There's also a few extra things that we can do with the effects rack. So for example, if we chuck one of those on there and set up one chain with an electric instrument, we might create a second chain, and on that one we might put an operator. And as we can see, two separate chains. If we have a MIDI keyboard plugged in, for example, we might want the lower couple of octaves to be playing our electric instrument while we have the upper octaves playing our operator instrument. So it's quite easy to do something like that. We can just click on the key button, and as we can see, for the electric instrument, we can give it the octave C-2 all the way up to B-2. And we can give the operator C-3 all the way up to the top of the scale there, as you can see. What we can also do with this is if we wanted these overlapping slightly, for example, if we wanted a one octave overlap, we can have it so that it crossfades between two different instruments over that octave just by adjusting the small lines at the top as you can see and we can also do this for our velocities so if you wanted the softer notes to play one instrument while the harder notes play another instrument again you can do the same thing as you can see there and again just like with our key settings we can also add a bit of overlap and crossfade in there by adjusting our little top bar there as we can see. We also have a chain control available with our instrument rack which allows us to set up multiple different chains almost like having multiple presets set up within our single instrument rack and then we can use our little control up the top to switch between the different chains and if you wanted to, if you had a MIDI controller hooked up for example, you can just turn on the on the MIDI mappings and we can choose to map this particular control just adjust the control on the MIDI controller and it will automatically map to our chain control so quite handy especially if you're doing live performance and you want to be able to switch between different instruments or different sounds as you go through your set the final thing we're going to take a look at is being able to save entire channels so say for example we had a couple of different effects on our audio channel, just chuck some random ones on there say we had a few different settings changed in there that we wanted to be able to keep like so, again we can just grab hold of our entire channel by grabbing its title bar and we can give that one a name as we can see and whenever you need to you can just drag that one straight into either the same session or a new session and you can keep the majority of the settings there. So as you can see, all of, our, all of our effects are the same. Volume levels, our panning. The only thing it hasn't kept for us is the send levels. So another handy feature there. And if we wanted to, we can also select all three, group those ones, and you can grab hold of the entire group and throw that one in there as well which is another handy feature. Again, just drag that one straight back in and except for the send controls, pretty much retains all of the settings that you had previously. So, some very handy features there. I hope you come across something that will make your production or your live performance using Ableton Live 8 that little, that little bit easier. And I hope to see you again in another Ben Ross's Conservatorium of Audio tutorial. Thanks for watching.